So what I'm thinking is maybe I can start introducing Codex from here. Fouad, as always, is like coding away in the background, and then he can join me for the live demos. What do you think? That sounds great. Cool. Let's do it. Take one. Hey everyone, I'm Roma and I work on developer experience at OpenAI. What I love most is making sure developers like you feel delighted and inspired by the tools we build. Well, today we're excited to give you a quick look at something new we've been experimenting with, the Codex CLI. Codex is a lightweight coding agent that can run directly from your command line. It can read and edit files, it can run commands securely, and you can really use it to build features or complete apps from scratch. But enough talk. To see that in action, I'm going to bring Fuad over uh, for some live demos. Hey. hey, hey, how's it going? Great. Hey, everyone. I'm Fuad. I'm on the Agents Research team, and I'm so excited to share Codex with you all. Why don't you uh, kick us off with maybe like a project that people might have seen before, let's say like OpenAI.fm, that we use as a quick demo app for our voice models. Yeah, let me go and pull up the website, OpenAI.fm. I think it's an open source repo, right? So I can just go ahead and clone that locally and fire up Codex. And so here we have Codex just running on my machine. The cool part is that it runs with any of our public models. And since I'm not that familiar with the code base, I'm just gonna go and start off by asking it to explain this code base to me. And so what I'm looking at here on the screen is that you're using O3 that we just launched today. Yeah, you can actually use anything from 4.1 from a few days ago to O3 and O4 mini today. And I think one really cool thing is as it's actually calling these tools, it's running commands, you can see it run the commands directly on your machine. So now we can see it put together this whole description. I can see that it described Hiable, what OpenIFM is. It shows me the code architecture, that it's a Next.js application. And finally, here's how I can actually run it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the development server. And um, did you have a use case in mind? Yeah, I mean, why don't we do something simple like dark mode, for instance? Like, I know developers always love dark mode, and, and maybe we can do something on top of that? Sure. Let me go ahead and fire up Codex. This time, I'm going to run it in full auto mode. So what does that mean exactly, full auto? Now it can also edit and run commands automatically. Got it. An important point there to make sure it still stays safe and secure is that when you run it in full auto mode, it's actually running network disabled and sandbox the directory that you ran it in. So it's perfectly safe for you to just be able to walk away, but it's really important for us to make sure that our users stay in control when you're actually running this on your own computer. That's great. It sounds like what we're uh, talking, it's changing all the Tailwind CSS uh, and, and making the changes we want. Yeah, so one of the nice things is that while I got this high level overview in one step, I can also have it go in and make very specific changes without actually having the context of where it's making those changes. So I think the nice part is that you, know, you as a developer can actually use this to both understand the code and actually make edits to it pretty seamlessly. Now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and open up the OpenAI.fm. I can open it up locally, and boom, we can see it in dark mode. That's and, amazing. You know, that's one example where it's an existing code base, but yeah. maybe try something new. Well, now that we've, got, we've gotten familiar with, with Codex, with this one example, I thought, why don't we create something a bit more fun uh, from scratch this time? A little bit like vibe coding, complete app from nothing. Sure. Uh, Is there one that you like in particular on macOS, for instance? OK, yeah. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I used to go to the Apple store and you know, play with Photo Booth. I don't know. I don't have to oh, do booth. this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's actually pull out maybe one of the filters in Photo Booth. OK, yeah. How about, how about this page of filters? Yeah. So are you able to like screenshot the app and just tell Codex that you want it like, put on the web? Exactly. So I'm just going to grab a screenshot of Photo Booth, and I'm just going to pass it in. This time, I'm going to put it in full auto mode. And it is the first reason about the image. It's going to understand what it what is even looking at. OK, great. It understands that it's a screenshot of Mac OS. That's Photo booth. Fitting, yeah. Um, and now I'm going to tell it, re-implement this in a single page HTML. And maybe I want to say, um, use the web camera API and make sure it's in landscape mode. And so now it'll just go off and given that context about the screenshot of what I wanted, you know, this could be you know, a screenshot of Photo Booth. It could be a screenshot of uh, Figma design. It could be a lot of different things. I've kind of used it in different contexts where I've drawn very low fidelity mockups. Um, and then just kind of give in Codex, uh, here's this context that I want, and then go off and make the changes. I don't have to give it any additional context, any additional direction. It'll just go off, think for a while. You can see its chain of thought reasoning as it's thinking through the problem, both what commands it's running and also what its thoughts are. And now, finally, here we see the page. Now, if I go ahead and open that page in my browser, I can go ahead and see that it created this photo booth. And boom, we have. Oh my God. Look how cool this that is. It's exactly the same. 
Isn't that amazing? That's this so cool. cool. And I'm sure you could have prompted your way to get such a result, but just like one screenshot and the model understood exactly what you wanted to build. We didn't even have to open a code editor this entire time. It was just all on our terminal. And sometimes I'll kick off multiple of these in parallel and just let them, you know, one explaining the code base to me, one making some changes. And it's just pretty magical to see it all come together. That's amazing. So it was just a quick look at some of the features that we have in Codex. We've seen how it can read and edit files directly. It can run commands very securely and you have different uh, knobs in order to, to pick the mode that you're the most comfortable with. But my personal favorite feature is really that one, like the multimodal reasoning. That's really the true magic of those reasoning models. You just feed it a piece of paper on a sketch or something, and boom, you have uh, code being written for you. Do you want to share anything about like uh, one more thing? About yeah, Codex? there's always one more thing. We're really excited to actually share Codex with you. Fully open source, you can go to our GitHub, you can see the Codex repo, you can explore it, you can actually use Codex to understand more about the repo, and we're super excited to hear what you think. Yeah, and Codex works with GPT 4.1 launched on Monday and with O3 and O4 Mini launching today. So we really can't wait to see what you build. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Yeah.